Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client, gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing, focusing on helping this client go to sleep at night. We're gonna be taking a look at the energies around this and learning, transmuting, and empowering this client and all those who watch, because we're all connected, helping this client fall asleep, helping all of us find a deeper place of rest. I want to thank you to the clients so much for this opportunity. I'm very curious to see what comes up and how to navigate this for you. I'm excited to be able to support you in falling asleep because when you get a good night's sleep, man, life is so much better with a good night's sleep. So thank you for reaching out and being open to sharing with us here on YouTube. So I'm going to read your goals and then I'm going to get started. You say, hi, Abby. I'm having trouble sleeping at night. I could use some intensive energy healing to help me enter into a deep place of rest. Feel free to share. Thank you for all you do. Okay. Okay. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to get in the zone here. And let's see what comes forward. Weird, it's, um, okay. The first experience, it's almost like, it's, it's crazy strange. <sighs> There's a, seems like a pinpoint of light and the pinpoint of light exists, I don't know, like diagonally down and it's hard to really place. How far away is it? Could be a million miles away, I don't know. Everything is in black. There's no stars. It's just a black backdrop. And so from that pinpoint, there's these like really thin sort of beams of light that are going out. So it kind of creates a circular, but it's not like a star, you know, it's, it's just like a tiny little something way out there and then very thin threads of light. And in that light, the, the light doesn't really glow. It's just like a thin thread of white with some maybe iridescent color in it. So there's some color in the white, but it's just like a thin thread and there's like thousands of thin threads and they don't ever connect to one another. There's always space in between and it sort of circulates like in every direction, right? Up, down, side to side, all that stuff. Now I'm standing here and I, it's like there's an invisible wall. I'm not allowed to go forward. What would I be going forward into? I have no idea. What am I looking at exactly? I have no idea what I'm looking at. Like if I'm going forward, I'm sort of stepping off uh, maybe the edge of some kind of ground that I stand on. And then I'm stepping out into, I don't know, maybe I'll fall into oblivion. Maybe I can fly and go over there. But everything is stopping me. And my whole body sort of pressed up against a, a window I can't see. And I just, I'm not allowed to go forward. So what does this picture have to do with you sleeping at night? <laughs> no idea yet. So we'll just start working with this and then we'll make more sense of it, okay? Yeah, you're really frozen. Like, um, you can't move. There seems to be a wall pressed on the backside. So you're just like pressed in the front and the back. And so you're pressed really thin. Like, <laughs> you just press between two walls. So you, you could be stuck. Like you can't really move or go anywhere. There's a lot of pressure on you. There's pressure on you from behind and from the front. There's pressure on you. And that pressure on you makes it, it hard for you to feel animated, to feel like you can move, to go where you want to go, when you want to go there, you're just stuck. You're stuck in the pressure, okay? Where is, what does the pressure represent? Maybe your life has got a lot of pressure in it. Maybe you're at the nucleus of all things and it all depends on you, perhaps. So I've got to understand what are these walls of pressure and how do I remove them? And what in the world is that strange thing way out there that creates the thin threads? 
What's that about? You don't want to... Okay, <clears throat> I, I show you a picture of these walls are gone. You're not under pressure. You can go wherever you want. And what does that mean to you? You're really uncomfortable about that. Like the pressure is this inevitable thing. It's going to be there. And if the pressure isn't there, there's something wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be you for a minute. I'm going to be stuck between two, like, walls that are pinching me. I can't go forward or backward. I'm in those walls. Like, I'm in there. And then it's, like, tight. Okay? Interestingly enough, it's not so much about the body as it is the mind. I see that you leave the body and you move your mind where it needs to go. I vibrationally, I'm not a fan of whatever that thing is that creates the threads out there. But you go put your mind into it, like you travel your mind out there. I don't know what it means, I don't know what that represents yet, but energetically something about this is all wacky, you know. But I gotta follow along in order to understand. So I'm kind of catching up with your mind and I'm following your mind wherever it goes. We have a big part of the message is you're working with only your mind. Your mind is the most important part of this equation. It's almost like your mind has to work over time or your mind has to be turned on. Your mind has to keep doing everything. Whether your body can go there and do it or not, your mind's got to be doing it. Is it possible when you go to sleep at night, your mind has to still be at work or something? Or your mind still has to be doing things? What... Uh, I'm, um, this is the, the energy that comes to me is I'm going to make it so your body is not going to work anymore. And so then you can, it's almost like uh, your mind is going to be very sad when it doesn't have the body functioning. <laughs> because you're going to need the body at times. You, you're going to need your body. Okay, there's a major separation here between your mind's function and then your body's function. But as long as the mind works, everything is fine. But that's not balanced at all. So I'm starting to gather more clues, okay? And how we're going to sort of solve this riddle for you in your energy field. Because once I solve this, it's going to kind of... The meaning of life, the meaning of rest, the meaning of work, the meaning of responsibility, the meaning of you, the meaning in time and space and all that you are is going to reach a next level alignment, okay? But we got to work with these strange puzzle pieces first and then we put the puzzle together and then you're like, okay, all right, the ingredients are new, but they're not that new. I'm just stirring up the pot different, and I understand myself, and I'm at the center of my balance, and I'm okay. Mind can turn off. Mind doesn't have to just be some wandering ghost going everywhere. I can go the places I need to go, and then I can just be where my body is. And where my body is, once it's in bed, my mind also needs to be in my body. And there needs to be a lights off for my mind. You see, that's like the recipe we're trying to get to here. And then everything inside you is nodding like, that's what I do. That's me. Because <laughs> what you're doing right now isn't going to bring balance, okay? <laughs> that would explain why, okay? Having trouble sleeping, okay. I... I suddenly decide to just not, fo not follow your mind anymore. I just uh, go straight to the strange 
I guess it's some pinpoint. It could be a mi million miles away, but it's just crazy. These light threads are really sharp, actually. They could cut you pretty easily. It's like a really morbid spider web, but none of these threads um, connect to one another. They're just individual threads. And I really, really, like, it, if I just run my fingers across them, it's not like ha the harp strings. I could play a song. No, it's like cuts my fingers straight off. It cut me and just, like, <laughs> cut me to pieces. It's, a, it's just the weirdest thing. It's actually kind of like an animal of sorts. And it's uh, almost like an eye that has lashes that go all the way around it. And it opens and closes like a uh, kind of jellyfish like but not exactly because it's always like um, all these are kind of always out like razor blades or something but then they can close sometimes like and then they open again. It's just like a strange eye. Maybe like a Venus flytrap perhaps. It's cosmically huge okay. This is so weird. It's a some vibrationally it, it defines it as a living organism. <laughs> and I go into the center of it. So freaking weird in the center of this. I don't even know what I'm walking into when it comes to the biology of this thing. It feels like I'm I'm walking into let's call it its sacral chakra, okay? Somehow it's connected, the sacral chakra and the throat, because it's both a, a mouth, but it's also like, um, like a sexual body space, same, simultaneously. And I start to notice that it's all tied up in here. And, you know, pain has a way of looking not very pretty. And so the sacral chakra and a mouth, and an umbilical cord wrapped around. And then I see the other sort of parts of what is like a human form. It's just, it's just like, here's an arm next to a leg. Like, I don't know, we folded a body in a weird way. In kind of a circle inside the living organism of a very weird, massive thing. <laughs> it's quite dangerous. You're not wanting to move your mind here. <laughs> You're not wanting to move your heart here. You're really feeling strange because you can't remember where you left yourself. You can't gather yourself. You don't know what you've done now. <sighs> I put your eyes in my eyes. I put your heart in my heart. And I put a reflection of your body that's trapped. I put it in my body. And this is horrifying to you. You're like squirming and screaming and begging me to stop. Then I say, we got to look at this. I don't know if you did this to yourself or life did this to you or whatever. But we got to look at this discomfort here. We got to get real with it. And then we can fix it. Like, you know, energy is actually pretty easy to mend. It's just getting to the parts that are in pain and being able to tolerate looking at them. That's the hardest part. Because it, it's really hard for us to cope with certain um, balances within ourselves because the pain is just literally too loud. It's too horrifying. And it's hard to add up how it all got like that. And it's hard to know how to fix it. And it's just like, let's just forget about it. Let's just forget about it. 
we're gonna figure this out, right? We got more clues to the puzzle. This is awesome. <laughs> and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. You start coughing up blood because I don't know why this razor blade scra scraping at your throat and uh, you're inside of me basically and I'm sort of this monument that stands still and forces you to look at this, okay? This is really hard to look at for you. And you're starting to cough up blood and it comes out my mouth, okay? And I, and I keep, I, I'm not necessarily babying you. Like, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. No, it's like, you will look at this. And that's, bam, period there. <laughs> you will look at this, period. <laughs> okay, from your mind, there's a bunch of snakes that are very worm-like. That they look like snakes, but they're very, like, squirmy and wormy-like in their behavior. And they're coming out of your mind. So they're actually coming out of my head right now. And you're screaming and coughing out blood and the snakes. There's uh, strange little tiny worms coming out of your heart. And your heart's under a lot of pressure. Feels like it could explode. And I bend down now, I use my hand, and I touch the umbilical cord that's wrapped around a folded body, it's wrapped around a throat and a sacral chakra, right? It's inside this massive, strange living organism. But I do this gently, like, like my hand is saying, I'm so sorry for your pain. My hand is saying it. And... Um, through my hand, like through the eye of my hand, your energy moves out of my hand and into that form. And you can't quite breathe, and you can't quite cough, and you can't quite scream, and you can't quite... And uh, everything is morbidly... It's just a morbid state. And I ask you to fix this. What's interesting in my, my behavior towards you, this tells me that you are capable of undoing this very easily. And so I'm holding the bar high for you. That's a compliment, <laughs> just so you know, okay? That means you're a self-sufficient person. All right, something else is happening here. I'm starting to turn into kind of like a, a troll, goblin, gargoyle looking monster. I'm really big, brutish, weird looking skin, um, weird looking face, like sloth-like um, hands and claws, like a uh, huge oversized body, brutish. And this seems to be the ego and the ego is uh, yelling at all these other parts, threatening. I don't know if this big monster wants you to stay like this, or if it's embarrassed by you, if it's yelling at you and putting you down for doing this to yourself. It's uh, very much represents ego here. Ego's assessment of what is good and bad. <laughs> you could be doing everything right, and now you're making ego feel small and unwanted and now it will hate you for that like ego is so has so many different <laughs> personality types <laughs> and how it, it it handles i don't know you could call it balance imbalance <laughs> how it assesses things how it handles things but now what's really strange about this sloth, ogre, goblin. Like, it seems like it's all of them. Gargoyle. Like, all of them connected as one form. It's It behaves as though it's also in love with you. 
and it actually touches you kindly and it, in a weird way it wants you to be messed up. Like, um, it's sad that you're messed up, but it wants you to stay messed up. Like, I'm so sorry that you're having to go through this, but then it whispers, yes, please stay like this. <laughs> and there's an attraction to you, like, um, an intimate attraction to you. And I'm, you look like a pile wrapped up in an umbilical cord with blood. You're, you're in pain and you can't even express it. And this weird big thing is just like, in a way, stroking your head in the morbid blood and saying, I'm so sorry for your pain. It's like, yes, stay like this. This is attractive to me. So it's going beyond ego and it's becoming some kind of, it's, no, person, spirit. It's, um, it has an opinion about things. It has a desire. It has its own needs that need to be met. You know, it's got its own riddle. <laughs> This is part of making it difficult for you to sleep at night. You've got a lot of twisted up stuff going on here. Emotionally, mentally, physically. And it, it's all, your mind is a traveler. And the body's left behind. The body's suffering from this. And a lot of the time, this is not like we consciously want to hurt ourselves. Life becomes demanding sometimes and maybe there's just one too many things on the to-do list and they have to all get done, you know, and uh, it's not just one day. It's like months and months and months. It could be the cross section of one too many things like here's this whole story and then here's this whole thing and then here's this whole thing and I got to deal with all of this stuff and I'm sandwiched in there and I'm sandwiched. And my mind goes places and I can't get it to stop. Okay, so <laughs> we're making progress. Okay. I'm going to be this strange creature because I'm kind of now the eyes watching the scene. I'm going to be this creature. And I tell, I, I basically turn the creature to stone. Because there's no way that you can navigate yourself with this thing. It's, it's basically deciding for you the way everything's going to be for you. Why does this thing get to decide? Is this thing a part of your ego in your own mind in some subconscious place? Maybe. Maybe this is some uh, morbid side of your higher selves wanting you to learn through great hardship or some weird thing and it's just all some messed up wound that needs to be healed you know but it's not really your higher self isn't morbid it's just like the the wound is morbid and then it creates these weird exchanges in the energy world it could be a person an actual human being that would like to see you basically in a place where you desperately need their presence and it's better for you to be in a more of a a state of pain and suffering than a state of health because if you're in a state of health you may not need them <laughs> that's kind of that could also be it okay it could be all of these things at once you know it could be all of these things Okay, the scene's going to go a little bit, because this seems to be impacting your sacral chakra. <clears throat> it's like the meaning of love and life and your ability to sing, you know, from the place of your soul within the sacredness of who you are in a human body. And I, I see a strange exchange here between this broken you, this, this you just, just messed up, okay? You just, you're representing messed up. And this thing, this overgrown thing, is, there's like this intimacy between the two of you. And you just go with it, I guess. 
but you're gonna have to, to really ask yourself what what helps you to be your best self what helps you be your best self and how do you be that because this this also tells me it's hard for you to be able to do that for yourself right now you're just kind of going with whatever comes even if it's not right just too tired to I guess, stop it, or you just cry. Okay, so again, this thing has to become a statue. And I put this thing in a weird sandwich baggie. <laughs> and then I send this thing into the sun. Because your eyes are still in my eyes and your heart's still in my heart and we're still looking at this and we have to look at all the pieces of the puzzle. Even the ones that we don't want to look at, the ones that don't make any sense, the ones we don't want to talk about, the ones that are just wrong on so many levels, blah blah blah, okay? You were too weak, you were too messed up, you were too, like, whatever. Interestingly enough, as we heal you and this strange living organism, I see that it's drying up from the inside out and those uh, tight sort of threads that are very sharp are not so sharp. They're flexible and loose and um, just like threads you could sew with, you know, and they're even kind of like um, they're not tight and out to the universe and they blink perfectly like close and then open. It's just more like they're becoming wisps all over the place. And there's a kind of like a, what looks like the head of a mushroom, and it's um, in the sacral chakras, it's like growing on the side. And you look at this and you cry. This is necessary, uh, the emotion is necessary to heal. I, I could tell you that, no, we need to just, we need to focus on correcting this. And then we can explore our feelings. But this actually is saying it's appropriate to look at this mushroom head growth and then just cry. And I start to notice there's this weird thread around your head. It's kind of like, um, like a hippie looking bracelet around your forehead or something. This white thread with beads on it. And the beads do not ever can touch each other. They're all separated by like maybe an inch of space between and they're just like a small rounded sort of reddish brown bead on a white string but this is stuck to your forehead i also see that your sacral chakra and root chakra and your legs even are just like morbidly sort of in the ground not like healthy roots but they're just like i don't know like some weird saturated liquid that your body became down there this feels like tears not cried, but it, it, at the same time, there's um, tears being cried. <sighs> there's a lot of mending that needs to be done here because this isn't all conscious related stuff. This is your body trying to heal inf energy information and it needs to be able to heal energy information from day to night till day to night and sleeping is part of that healing process but also trauma can be a little bit like an electrocution and so if your life has a lot of stress in it it's kind of like trauma maybe it has a lot of um, heavy memories on top of a lot of responsibility right then so it's like a, a electric electrocution thing it's it affects the nerves so now your nerves are just kind of wired, you know? And we've got this pain is, you know, pain, like I said, it's, it's not like a pretty thing. I don't, I don't handle your pain in the marshmallowy heaven of, of everybody smiling and happy. No, I, I heal your pain in the disturbing hell of where pain actually exists. And that's why we even know what hell is, because hell is a place of eternal pain, basically. So forevermore, you are in pain until you're not. 
because we can mend and heal this, you know? So I know we're looking at some abstract imagery and some abstract exchanges like between this monster and your morbidly tied up body and this strange thing. But this makes sense to your subconscious or it makes sense. It's like dream images. Like your mind may not be able to make logical sense. That doesn't mean it's not powerful information. This is, um, this makes sense. And I can feel that there's a, like a build up here in your sacral chakra, like a stone building up, not just the mushroom top is just like a stone building up. It's like it's heavier and heavier and I can feel it um, with my hands. Like I can actually touch the dimensions of it. And uh, I'm just going to tell you there's another scene because I'm still trying to get you out of that big organism, put you back. Like, I'm still trying to get us there. And the scene is means it affects your throat. It affects the value of your voice, the value of, um, you know, communications of love, communications of intelligence, communications of emotions, communication of all kinds. Okay. Throat chakra, communication of your soul. Like, it's all there. And uh, you're hung on a noose, so it's it's uh, choking your throat and your self-expression, okay? It could be external self-expression, internal self-expression, okay? It could be even how you talk to God or don't, you know, it's just like all communication is part of your throat. And again, I see the liquidy part of your root and your sacral chakra as part of the earth. And then there's like a weird morbid gap. And it just seems like your spine is exposed and there's some kind of pulling upward. And your throat and your third eye, it just, and the, your crown is just like lifted up in a balloon. And there's like this morbid spinal column. And uh, you've got a noose that comes from like heaven or something. Some like upside down heaven. It's called hell. <laughs> it's just, it's all morbid, but it comes from up there. And it was like a bright sunny day up there. And everything is just like, where's the heaven? Where's the hell? I'm in hell. I can't fix it. Everything is what it is. I, I'm being pulled. Um, I'm being elongated, stretched, um, thin or whatever. Like there's a lot of language here. And uh, so the scene kind of speaks for itself, you could say. This is all making it hard for you to sleep at night. This is your body transmuting energy. That's like affecting the nervous system, affecting your muscles, affecting your breathing, affecting your mind. No wonder your mind wants to travel everywhere. It wants to get out of the body that's tr trying to digest all this information. So you've got a lot of cross sections here. Okay, I'm just going to ask, because we, we, we're working with a certain amount of time. I'm just going to ask, what can I do to really um, come full circle with this? All right. Your eyes are in my eyes. Your heart is in my heart. And we're back at the living organism. I take this weird conglomeration of yourself and I pick it up like a baby that's just, and you just like this helpless, morbid conglomeration. It's just like a baby that can't, you can't fix it. A baby can't just drive the car and go get a job, you know, can't even freaking roll over until it's old enough, you know? <laughs> and so you, this represents a kind of a helpless scenario. You can't fix it. I do hold the bar high. It tells me that you can. But right now, we're, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to take you out of this mouth of this thing. And the thing instantly dies like the apple falls from the tree. It just, I don't know, it's like I'm in the ocean of the universe, but there's no stars and it's kind of a maroon black. And it's just like kind of falling, like just, just like falling. It's just like sinking and I'm flying away and uh, going back to your body. But I'm not going to the body that's sandwiched between two, uh, pl like two pieces of glass or two walls. Like uh, I put you on the ground behind, the, the, behind you. 
basically there's a wall there but it's like I'm on the other side of the wall and I place my hand on where would the heart would be for the conglomeration your eyes and heart are still inside me as we look at this reflection of yourself okay and I say that it's like um I, I can't put language to it. It's really just like the song of your soul. And the song of your soul emphasizes um, who you are, what you are, as you are, your love, your, your reason, your, um, your, your, your ma you matter. Um, like you, you are love uh, and you are loved. Uh, you're not in knots that you can't untie because this is who you truly are. That's the song, okay, is the memory of who you are. And I start to see a lot of this um, disappears, the knots of yourself disappear. And you're crying and it's a bit embarrassing because you just, you don't want it to be like that. You would never want it to be like that. You would never want to do that to yourself. You just but we're glad you're just venting that because we hear you. <laughs> it's like the human conundrum here. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and so you're you're just crying and uh, venting this, but you yourself, and I put the mirror here and I say, look at you. You are your song. <sighs> Instantly your eyes, your heart go into this body and you're standing upright and you look like a healthy human being and you radiate the sunlight. And you have all these like hairs of light all around your body, head to toe. And they're just like, just like that living organism, the strands. You've got these like long strands, like everywhere, head to toe. And they're just like ner part of your nervous system or like feelers of the world around you, feelers of people, feelers of um, etheric spaces, you could say, the feelers of Mother Earth, feelers of the balance and the voices of all things. It's like an empathic thing. Like you, you actually have feelers and... Um, a sense of, I don't know, like the, the breath or the communication of love or the communication of feelings, the communication of, of everything. And this is helping you because it, it, it's possible that there's been some need to mend all of this or it's possible that you are becoming more yourself. That's a kind of a thing I'm coming across right now is People are stepping into more of their true energetic selves and there's been like an upheaval of difficult kind of learning and digesting and we're starting to blossom as the next level version of ourself. And so all these hairs are like a spiritual gift, a psychic gift. You're either familiar with it, kind of familiar with it, or it's brand new to you, but it's being shown to me. And it's pretty, um, I've never really, I, I could tell this would be real, I could tell this could exist, but I've never really been shown this directly about anybody so it's a something okay that's worth noting that I'm seeing this for you okay but you tell me it's time to let go of the old your song the you that knows you the you that's balanced put together the you with all the feelers like everywhere head to toe like threads of hair um, you actually like send light into what was and it all just leaves, it all just goes, it all just sinks. And um, you leave a, a strange world behind. You're actually starting fresh. And uh, there's a lot of catching up with yourself. There's a lot of catching up with yourself and that's not going to, your mind's not going to get you there. So your heart will get you there. And you've got to trust and have some faith in the spirit realm or in God or in the energy universe that it's not, you're not the almighty one that has to do it all. And some of it is I'm taking a vacation from my mind and my thinking and I'm just going to focus on the present moment. I'm going to let everything just fall into place. You, you can only do so much, right? So do as much as you can, as best as you can, but there, there has to come a point where you have to turn everything off. Let your body heal. Let your body rest. And give that to yourself. <sighs> I like seeing you glowing like this. You literally, it's almost like you've been on a world of learning. Like a crazy world of learning. And that world is like a sinking ship 
in a cosmic dimension. It's just its own space. It's all going down and you are leaving it behind and it's just going to be new material for some other place in the universe, you know? I don't know where you're going next, but you're choosing to be true to yourself. And that statement right there seems to be the answer to the riddle is remembering where the song exists, being centered in the heart and being true to yourself is also breathing, giving yourself breathing room, giving yourself resting room, knowing that you need, you got to take a vacation from the mind. It's, it's, it's affecting your nerves by the way. So it like, that's what that's showing me. So just, you're going to have to take a break from the mind. <sighs> And that's going to help heal the body and then the nerves are going to just be a part of that. All these weird subconscious communications are going to start to get mended because the rest helps that happen. So I'm going to see that you're just comfortably inhaling and exhaling. You don't have to make sense of any of this. Just let it the, the energy work do the work, okay? If I sat here for this whole time in silence... That's one way I could share what I do, but I like to describe what I see, what it means to me, and give you something to think about, but not all that I do is meant to be 100% logical. It's layered pieces of information that are more than just what I can say and how we can translate it in one way, but it's got many ways of meaning. It's bringing you back into an alignment with yourself with the spirit of you and with a new life, it seems to me like you're starting a new experience, a new translation of reality. And you are a song, okay? <laughs> so that's, that's my message. Wow, wow. It really impacted my own heart. Really impacted even my own sacral chakra. Like, um, those places specifically, I know it's going to impact communication, so the throat, but I don't feel that like like energy in myself, but that that is my experience with it. Your experience is going to be how you communicate and you communicate authentically, right? You you make authentic communications with yourself and it's it's not just the words you speak, it's the body language you're using. It's the, the choice, too. It's the communication. I love myself enough to turn my mind off and rest. That's a communication. It's in action. A communication in action. They, they say words like action speak louder than words. So throat chakra can be involved in self-loving actions, too. It's pretty interesting stuff. So, uh, man, that's a really cool session. Thank you for this. <sighs> Nice exhale, nice winding down. Hmm. All right, I wish you well. Thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, thank you all, have a great day.